will talk about the other two incentives. So first one is canonical incentive. So in the first video we will talk about the hypercanonical ensemble, which consists of an isolated system. Now we will relax the condition. So let's say so that's our system. And we join it in the key reservoir. So now the system and heat reservoir can exchange heat. So it is no longer an isolated system. It can exchange heat. So instead of specifying its energy, we will specify the temperature and its volume. Um, since it is not you know, exchanging particles for the elsewhere. So that's a canonical example. Particles, no particle in space. And when the thermal equilibrium is reached, the system has a specific temperature. So a good example would be let's take a glass made of made of conducting holes so instead of steam so put some water and some hot water and put a lid on so it will not allow the Vapor surf molecule to exchange with this helmet. So we will do heat to its connecting walls and the reservoir in this case is the sun. So heat is there. The sun is. And this is our system. So we can exchange heat in the system and that the thermodynamic equilibrium is reached at a certain um, temperature. And since the thermal particle is not allowed to change, it has a value of n. And the volume of its constant is equal to v. So that's the canonical ensemble. Um, in thermodynamic language, we can call it the process. The next ensemble is the grand canonical ensemble. So that's the grand canonical ensemble. So in this ensemble, we open the lid. So that's a glass made of connecting walls, and we allow the water molecules. So, that's heat. Uh, we get some more salt radiation like uh, by radiation or by conduction. So, in this case, uh, the thermal dynamic medium is based on the specified value of temperature. And so, now we'll uh, change the particle so it will not have a specific value of. Number of particles, particle number will change. So, but on average, when the thermodynamic equilibrium is reached, has a constant average number of particles. And so that's our grand canonical principle. In the thermodynamic language, we may call this system as an open system. So we have already met those ensembles in thermodynamics. It's just that they are uh, different names. So now let's consider the idea of macro state and micro state. So let's go macro state and micro state. In layman terms, a 
microstate is a detailed description of a thermodynamic system. So, I will write a detailed description. On the other hand, the macrostate tells you uh, a limited amount of information that the system can use. So, let's go a little bit this way. Let's take an example. Uh, let me take the idle gas as an example. So, that's the box. Uh, we have considered the same microchemical ensemble, so it has n number of particles, volume is V, and it has a certain energy. Okay? So, there are n number of particles in the universe. So, how do we describe the system according to its macro state? When the thermodynamic equilibrium is reached, uh, we must specify as follows well as pressure, its volume, and temperature. And these three values, uh, known as the thermodynamic variables, describe the state of the system in the thermodynamic equilibrium. And if we want a pictorial presentation, then we then these and those macro states exist in the P diagram. So that's P, that's V, and a given state has a value of P and V. So let's say P not P. So a given point we can describe the configuration of the system, a thermodynamic description. But how do the micro states of the system look like? So what this really becomes in the phase is. So that's a peak. So that's a six dimensional phase is. I cannot draw that on the two dimensional plane. So that's just a pictorial presentation. So for constant energy, it will be a region R that has. Points on it that will correspond to a single point P not P not in this PV diagram. So it's every point, so for example, we take this point and a certain value of P1, P2, P2, P3, N, P1, P2, P3. So these are the coordinates and elementals of all the particles or all the n particles in the system. So it's specified a given configuration. But speed of V not value describe a, a, a average amount of information that is contained in the system. So the law of microstate will be there in this constant energy surface uh, E such that all those points correspond to the same microstate. All those configurations, all those momenta will correspond to the same thermodynamic description. So, we, have, uh, we see that a given macro state can, uh, can be and have a correspondence with an uh, infinite number of macro states. So, that's a, a rough idea of what macro state and micro state looks like. So, let's now. Come to the postulates of steps theory. So, postulates. So, I will call the first postulate P. So, what P is it? This is called the Pygmodic Hypothesis. Yeah. What this hypothesis says is that ensemble average of an observable, ensemble average of an observable is equal to time average of the 
observable. Uh, what does it mean by observable is um, anything that you can measure. So, for example, energy is an observable. You can measure the energy of thermodynamic system. So, we replace this by the energy. Sample average of energy is equal to time average of energy. So, yeah. you can write this in mathematical equation like, for example, if A is an observable, then ensemble average is equal to the integral of B by P, P and Q, Q, observable, observable, and your function of phase case that means depends on the generalized coordinates and generalized energy. And you will apply this by phase space density. Go, which can also be a function of the key. So that's the ensemble value. Now we see that this is equal to time average. So what's the time average? Time average is equals to the number of t of t of the observable of the pregoric hypothesis hypothesis says that this ensemble average is equals to the time average. Uh, we usually calculate the observable by taking the time average, but we may not know how the observable depends on time. So instead, we can use this ensemble average to calculate the average values of the observable. So now we need a space space density to calculate that. So now we make another hypothesis. So this is the equal time probability process. So what this hypothesis says that for an isolated system Isolated system, every microstate which is accessible which is accessible to the system is equally probable. So let's take an isolated system. Isolated system is a microcanonical system. So let's take the same average mass. Now it has m particles, energy P, energy P. So the given volume, for a given energy, the phase space it has a region of constant energy. Now, these points are its corresponding microstates. So this hypothesis says that it has equal probability to be in any of the microstates. This will help us to deduce the phase space density goal. And it turns out that the phase space density is just a constant. And we will derive that in the next point. The last hypothesis is the Boltzmann hypothesis. Uh, this hypothesis relates the entropy to the number of microstates of the system. So the last hypothesis is the Boltzmann hypothesis.
And it says that eventually, as we do students in class, they are into the logarithm of the number of matrices. So this is constant is called the Boltzmann constant. Omega is the number of microstates that the system is accessible to. And this formula is only applicable to the microcomponents and the isolated system. So, in the next video, we will talk about how to count the number of microstates and phase distance and how to calculate the phase distance. So, that's, I guess, we will talk about that in the next video. Thank you.